podcasts, our events, our um, all the things that you know people engage with us on. And I just introduce myself. My name is Elizabeth Tetchi. I'm the founder and the CEO of Aspire to Inspire Dyslexia, also known as A2I Dyslexia. I want to say a very big welcome to everyone who's watching, no matter what country you're watching from. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, or good night. Some of us might be going to bed in different countries. Um, and I just want to say a very, very big welcome to all our viewers that are watching um, our live show today. Today's live show is very different to every other day. We are talking about why I speak about dyslexia in a very positive way. We have the amazing lady, Carla Mark Thompson, who will be joining us in a minute, and I will be introducing her to tell you about why she's passionate to make a change within um, the dyslexia remix, so to speak. So, I, first of all, before I forget, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, because I know my brain. We will finish the show and I think, oh, I wish I said that. But I thought, let me say it in the beginning before we come to the end of the show. Um, and thank you so much for um, our funders, Black Funding Network, who funds this program uh, ever since we got the funding from, I think it was sometime in April of this year. And, and we've been running these um, live shows, podcasts, and we they actually sponsored our award ceremony, which was absolutely phenomenal. If you get the chance, follow, follow us on social media and you will be able to watch the live show clips of it by the way, and the people that won it really do deserve to win the Black Achievement Awards um, with dyslexia, of course. Now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mark Thompson, uh, sorry, Carla Mark Thompson. You see, get it all muddled up sometimes, but that's part of my dyslexia. And I'm not, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that there are times when I do get things muddled up because that is my condition. There's nothing I can do about it. And I have actually kind of stopped apologising from time to time because that makes me feel a bit not all right when I start saying, I'm really sorry I spot this wrong. I'm really sorry I said this wrong. However, dyslexia is what it is. Some people say to me, Lizzie, you keep it real. And it is real. So I'd like to welcome Carla Mark Thompson, advocate for female empowerment and senior youth worker. That's in bold font 14, so I can read that. But I'm going to put my glasses on and read a little bit about Carla. Carla, I want to want you to um, obviously come live on our show and... Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you are passionate to make a change within the dyslexia remit. And just before we do that, I just want to read a little bit about you. So, Carla uh, Mark Thompson is an advocate for female empowerment, positive self image, body confidence, mental health, well being, and fitness. She delivers fitness and confidence workshops to young girls in schools and colleges, as well as one to one personal training for women and run women's only fitness event and exercise classes. Carla also works full-time as a senior youth worker. Gosh, where'd you get the time to do all this? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Welcome to A2I Dyslexia, Carla. Um, please Thank tell you. our viewers who you are, what you do, and why you speak positively about dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that amazing um, introduction, Elizabeth. Um, and hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Carla. Um, I'm currently a senior youth worker um, for a charity. So I work with children that are aged from nine to 25 um, who are in mainstream education and those that have additional needs as well. Um, I would say that I want to kind of make a positive um, impact in regards to dyslexia simply because I know what it's like to be diagnosed kind of later on in life. Mm -hmm. um, I was diagnosed when I was in my second year of college. Um, and I just can understand that it can sometimes be seen as quite a negative thing. I never used to see dyslexia as a positive thing. Um, when I first was told, you know, you're, you know, I had symptoms of dyslexia through my work, um, I didn't take it uh, positively. And I think um, I've seen the transition that I've been able to make um, from my perspective of it. And I want to be able to share that with so many other um, people, especially young people as well. Awesome. So what was it like when you were first diagnosed with dyslexia? What was the first thought? Because I know for me, when I went, I was actually, wasn't going to go for this assessment because I thought, yeah, I don't know what this woman's talking about. There was a lecturer at my university who said, do you think you might have dyslexia? Those days we wrote our essays. So my D's and B's and W's and M's and S's all kind of muddled up. And mm -hmm. I couldn't see it, but my lecturer could see it at the time. And I remember her saying to me, do you think you might have dyslexia? And I looked at her like, what? I don't know what this woman's talking about. Me? Dyslexia? I didn't even know what that was in the first place. 
So when I was sent off to go and get this assessment done, I remember getting to the building to get the assessment. I just turned around and went back and I thought, nothing's wrong with me. I don't know what she is on about. And then I fell drastically. And then I had to go for the assessment. But when I went for the assessment, I, I even hid the report for so long. I couldn't go back to read it because, you know, the report talks a lot about what we can't do. And then it goes into what we can do and it goes into solutions of, of recommendations of what we can use to support us within education in the workplace. And I read it and I cried like a baby because I thought, oh, what's this? And why have I been diagnosed with this? And, you know, and I hid it for so long. I never told a soul, not my family, no one, not even my children, until one day my back was against the wall and I decided to do something about dyslexia. And today we're speaking about why you speak positive. Um, about dyslexia. So what was it like for you when you were initially diagnosed? And what um, made your tutor or whoever diagnosed you, what made them send you to student support for this, for, for, for the assessment? Um, so I I was told about it, I think my first year of college. And at that point, um, because I did quite well in my GCSEs, um, I kind of, and I think I also shocked myself at the level of, of how well I actually managed to do in my GCSEs. Um, and so going into college, um, I was quite confident um, in regards to being able to try and do well um, in my A-levels. But when one of my tutors, um, I think sociology I was doing at the time, had said to me, like, you know, I think you may have dyslexia because um, we're reading your essays and there's quite a lot of um, errors that we're picking up and they're quite consistent throughout your work. And I became defensive straight away I'm like what are you talking about are, you know are you trying to question my level of intelligence um I didn't take it very well and um I kind of dismissed any support that they were going to give me it wasn't until I then did my second year um at college and um again I was told oh you know we think you may have dyslexia um and this was from another tutor as well so I'm like well maybe there's something here, you know, maybe I might have to listen to um, what they're trying to tell me because this is the second time that somebody's told me this. Um, and I was still a little bit defensive, but I thought I kind of warmed to the idea. And then um, I actually had to repeat uh, a year um, before I had to, before, yeah, I repeated a year for my A-level. So I did three years at college and in my last year, um, I then got, um, had a test done within the college to see, you know, if there was actually, you know, if what these shooters were saying to me were, you know, the truth. Um, and I think when I had been referred to do the test, I didn't feel, um, I didn't feel uncomfortable at that point. I think I kind of just was just like, you know, well, okay, let me just see. Cause it might, <laughs> it might come back as, you know, I'm actually, you know, there's nothing actually wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I, I think my perspective from there kind of shifted quite a lot. Yeah. And of course, you were young at the time. So yeah. did you tell any of your peers or when you went home, did you tell your parents that, look, I've been told I've got dyslexia and, and this is it? And how did your parents take it? You know, um, so I, I grew up with my mum the majority mm -hmm. of the time. And um, from what I can remember, I don't think she took it negatively. Oh, okay. um, yeah, she didn't take it negatively at all. And any friends that I had at the time, I cannot remember any form of like negative... Um, reactions to it you know um so that i was kind of fortunate in that sense mm -hmm. right so today's topic obviously is why we you speak about or we you and i speak about dyslexia in a very positive way tell us some of these strengths and the greatness of having this condition dyslexia mm -hmm. and our viewers um i know that sometimes our viewers will drop comments and of course as we're speaking comments and questions might come and we'll answer them at the same time but tell me a typical day with your dyslexia and some of the positive things that you um, has helped you to, to thrive, to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. um, I think I got a lot of the support. So going into university is when I kind of experienced the level of support that you actually get. So though I did my assessment, um, I did my assessment at college. They then referred me to, I think, the, the, an actual assessment centre um, to then have like the full assessment done. And then um, I was made aware that um, of all the support that they give you at university, you know, um, and I think my confidence grew there because I knew that there was support 
going to be put around me. I was going to get extra time. I was going to be given um, resources um, like, you know, a laptop and all the things that come with that um, and extra time and, and, and all, so many different things put in place for me. And I think um, that was one advantage and one positive thing that I can definitely say there's, there's actually support out there for you. You're not kind of like marginalised and penalised um, for having, it's actually, you know, it's referred to as a disability. And so that, that's quite empowering in, in a sense because you know that um, there are organisations out there, there are um, strategies out there put in place for you to actually be able to do your best and you're not going to be penalised um, for for having that kind of um, learning disability. And so for me, that is definitely one um, positive thing that I've been able to kind of like take from it all. And also just the level of um, encouragement that I can now give on to younger, younger um, children, because obviously I work with children day to day and a lot of them, um, you know, come say like, you know, I'm not doing that well at school because I've got dyslexia and I think there's something wrong with me. But I can then, I've been able to turn around on so many different occasions and be like, oh my gosh, I've got dyslexia too. Um, and it's not, and I went to uni, I went, I did well at school and stuff like that. There, There is support there for you. Um, and so as I see myself as a role model for these young people, being able to use that as well and, ex and, and tell them my experience is worth more than anything because then they can see and like think, oh, Carla's been able to still go through all of these kind of, um, these kind of things and achieve good grades and she's in a job right now. I can do it too. So, yeah. Yeah. Role model is really, really important. And also representation of, um, you know, we have um, a, a lot of people from the BME community. That yeah. say, Look, I don't normally see anyone that looks like me. We've got dyslexia. When you Google dyslexia right now, you get, you know, it's not predominantly, you won't get many BME or yeah. Black and Asian that will pop up um, or on your Google um, search. So it is a real positive um, role model. And I think the younger we, we kind of reach out to the younger generation, or should I say the quicker we reach out to the younger generation, the better. Because yeah. when I was growing up, I, there was nothing like that. You know, I, I imagine I, when I was young and I was at one of your youth clubs and you've got this sex here and you said, look, it's okay, you can thrive. That would have really given me a positive way of growing up with this. But finding out that I had to sex at 32 years of age was like, it was really mind blowing. And I'm still living with that trauma, by the way, you know, and I'm saying that live on, on our live show because someone once said to me, once you're diagnosed, I think it seems like you need some kind of counselling or because it's so, you know, the repercussion of dyslexia can be a huge thing. And I think you're doing great work, you know, working with these young people and being a, a role model for, for them, which is absolutely amazing. So that was my first question. What, I mean, you've spoken about support available and um, all the different gadgets that you got at uni. Has that helped you to move on into your, I mean, your kind of work that you're doing? Are you using any of the assistive technology? And which ones do you use? I mean, are you using Dragon and Clarity? It's different for everybody, isn't it? Everybody's um, yeah. aspects are so different. Um, <laughs> I used to use um, Clara Reed. I mm -hmm. think once I left uni, I kind of stopped. Um, and I think that's literally because I went into jobs that didn't necessarily demand um, any form of heavy use of technology um, and reading as well. And so um, I think I, l I was able to kind of like learn different strategies. Um, if I was going to read, like do an everyday kind of reading, um, it would be literally having a highlighter and like circling words and stuff like that and going over, taking my time and going over a material that I'm reading so that I can actually digest the information or writing notes so that mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of digest um, the information. And I suppose those are kind of skills that I've, I've been able to learn at uni that I've been able to apply into um, my life now. Um, so yeah, I mean, there isn't there isn't really much technology that I would say that I use, just the strategies that I've probably been able to, to learn yeah. um, along yeah. the way. And just maybe also like, if, I've, if I'm writing a document, maybe having somebody else kind of like read over it and check over it again, just mm -hmm. so that um, if there are any errors that can be um, corrected yeah, of course. And, you know, we, we're talking positive about dyslexia. And the one word I hear is, oh, dyslexia is a superpower. Dyslexia is a gift. Dyslexia is this. And, I, and on the other hand, I get people saying, oh, okay, it's a superpower, it's a gift, is that, but I'm failing drastically in at work, 
or, or, or in education or everyday life. I mean, you know, I've got dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, and visual stress, as we saw with my glasses. And every day is a, it's, it's a struggle, you know, in a workplace, trying to find my way wherever I'm going. I get lost. Everything. And I'm talking about everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look, it's right in front of you. And I'm like somebody, oh, I want to get to this building. And go, you're standing right outside it. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'll get into the building and I'll get lost everywhere. And it's kind of chaotic. But we, we, you and I know that, you know, there is some really great positive things about mm-hmm. having this condition. I, you know, and I'd like you to share that with our viewers today, some of the strengths and the positivity and all the things that, you, you, you know, that has helped you to, to get to where you are. Um, are you able to give us examples of that? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so positive things, are you saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think definitely it's, it's just, I think it really is the perspective that I've been able to have. I think um, knowing that, I think I pull on the, the point that they're, there's so much, there's resource out there. I suppose if it's only if you're able to be exposed to that, and obviously that comes with people picking up the fact that you've got this dyslexia or you disclosing it. Um, I think there's so much power in, in in saying that, you know, declaring that you actually have dyslexia, even though it's quite a hard thing to do for some people, I can acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, um, knowing that um, I can be honest about it and, know that there's support there for me if if I need it and um, I suppose like even like going to like um, rigorous job um, job applications that I may have had to fill out and them acknowledging that you know what okay you'll get your 25% um, extra time and things like that and knowing that um, it's again you're I'm not going to be penalized because I have dyslexia or I'm not gonna and my chances of achieving something isn't going to be put put back because of the disability that I I have um and so yeah I think um that's I I feel like yeah there's two kind of like examples that I gave kind of like just being able to be um a voice of encouragement for for the younger for those that are younger than me that actually have it um I think that's been one of the most powerful things that I've I've been able to do again because I've seen so many especially young young women that I work with come up to me and say, oh, I've got dyslexia. And they say it in quite a negative way. Mm-hmm. Um, and me just being able to say, that doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. It's possible. Let's look at, let's see if there are any things that have been placed around you for you to um, progress. Because I also mm-hmm. think that um, although I know it's a disability and I know that it comes with its challenges and, and um, at times it, yeah, it comes with its challenges. I also believe that sometimes we can allow it to kind of like um, overtake us so much that we end up kind of like self-sabotaging. Though we have this disability, we can end up self-sabotaging and and almost um, not giving ourselves a fair chance and thinking, yeah. oh, because I've got this, I'm just not going to try or I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. But um, yeah, I think it's really, it's, I suppose, yeah, I think it's really just about um me being able to empower and 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 allow the positive perspective that I've got to be spread amongst others so that they don't um self self sabotage or feel like they can't um fulfill their, their desires and dreams as well. That's that's so phenomenal. Got a very quick question from Aaliyah. Hello Aaliyah. Aaliyah's joined us from on YouTube. Um and she's but her question is um one question kind of do um hang on a minute let me read this right one question kind of you do so many things to empower young girls. What inspires you, or what inspired you, rather than inspires you? Yeah, yeah. Ah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. thank you, Elia. Um, what's inspired me? I think it's just knowing that I've got a purpose. Knowing that God hasn't just plopped me on the earth for nothing. Um, I know that um, who God's called me to be. I've been, you know, this is who I am, and this I've got a purpose to fulfil. And I suppose I, growing up, I, ne- I didn't necessarily have any um, women that necessarily looked like me, that mm-hmm. had the same battles that I did um, speak up or that I could kind of like feel like, oh my gosh, like that reminds me of something that I'm going through. I don't, I don't remember having that. And so um, I think it's just knowing that I've, God's given me a purpose and knowing yeah. that 
um, you know, I do have, a, I have self, I've got self-worth and I've got value and, and everything that God's invested in me is not to just stay inside here. It's for me to actually pour out to other people and share that. And so it's just knowing that um, God's gifted me with that power and everybody has got, has been given a gift, but it's just um, how that gets drawn out and us being willing to be able to share that. And so, yeah, I'm just, for me, what motivates me and inspires me is that there are young women out there that may be suffering in silence for whatever mm -hmm. reason, but if I can be an advocate and a voice for them, then that's what I want to be. And you know what, Carla, it's so empowering to actually go somewhere, meet someone. And sometimes if I've got to write something down or fill a formula, whatever it might be, and I will say, oh, actually, I've got dyslexia, because I'm like, once they're giving me the pen, I can feel this heart palpitation going. So I'm like, I'm not going yeah. to fill that in, you know. And um, sometimes I've just literally mentioned to wherever situation I find myself in, I've got dyslexia. And people are so understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never really had anything negative recently. When I say recently, the last five years, people are kind of accommodating, they, they understand, they want to help. Um, or what I get is, oh, my brother's got dyslexia, or my sister's got dyslexia, or I know someone with dyslexia. And it's just so empowering to hear um, what you were saying about, you know, you, you've been put on this earth planet, whatever you want to call it, um, and there's a purpose for you. And the amount of times that sometimes I sit back doing the work I'm doing, which is heavily paper-based or admin-based, and the amount of times I'm like, I don't know if I can carry on. And I wake up the next day and it's like, well, what else will you be doing? You know, and I'm saying this live because it's so real. I can't sit here and pretend that my day-to-day's work, it's, you know, not challenging because it, it can be. So yeah. much, you know, paperwork and so much things that I have to do as a CEO. And as much as I've got all my gadgets that helps me, it doesn't really solve the problem of having, having dyslexia. And I normally say to some of my colleagues, what will I be doing otherwise? You know, I keep sort of running away from it and then I come back to it. <laughs> you know, run away sort of like one day and the next day it's like, I couldn't not be here to, uh -huh. to do the job I do, you know. And when you were speaking as well, you, you spoke about disability. I've met people that have actually come to A2I to use our services. And the word disability or dyslexia is defined as a learning difficulty, a learning disability. And I know some people, especially young people, would say, I don't want disability associated with that particular person. They don't want that word at all. So I would say, okay, you know, how have you, because you speak positively and use that word quite loosely, and so on, so do I. And sometimes when I when I go out and I give talks, I call it a disability because it's a barrier. In every uh -huh. shape or side of my, my day yeah. or my, my, my life and some people are kind of don't want that associated what advice would you have for a young person who says i've got dyslexia but i really don't want them to use the word disability when they're describing what dyslexia might be mm. i think it would be really interesting to know why mm. they would feel that way or why they don't want to be referred to uh, or referred they don't want it to be referred to as a disability i'd really be intrigued to ask them exactly why so that we can kind of like maybe tackle maybe what um maybe underlying behind that because that could be a level of shame it could be a level of um yeah i think shame is i think shame is like probably the underlying surface sometimes it, whether that comes from within them whether that comes from how um, maybe culturally or how parents are, uh, maybe um, maybe they've seen how other people have been treated, but if they've, you know, disclosed that they've got um, a, a disability, whether it's physical, whether it's 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 not seen. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's really, it would be really important for me to, to ask the question why and kind of like almost destigmatize um, if there was that form of kind of like shame and embarrassment um, about it and help them to see a more positive perspective on it and um, also kind of like look at you know different people that have dyslexia and see what they've been able to to achieve and it's it's although it, you might be hindered in one area um, of your life um, there's still possibilities just there's a barrier like you said there might be that barrier but there's there's still you can still go for, you can still go far with that and there's probably still also 
a lot more aspects of you that you can also embrace. So it doesn't have to like, you don't have to cancel out your whole self just because you have dyslexia. But I think, um, yeah, focusing on the reason behind that and also just maybe enlightening. And also sometimes it can be a level of um, being uneducated about what it what it means and what a disability is and, and that kind of language around it. So just being informative and, and educating in that sense too. Of course, and that's why we're here today, you know, talking about dyslexia openly and the positive things that come with having this condition, I call it. Some people call it learning difference. Some people call it all different things, but I know that it's a condition for me, honestly. And it's just, it can be overwhelming every day. But it can also be very positive. I mean, sometimes I come up with some amazing creative ideas and, I, you know, I, and I look at myself and think, God, how great is that? You know, uh -huh. to be able to stand back when people are panicking and rushing and pulling their hair out. And I'm standing behind going, well, this is how you do it. It's that simple, really. You know, that problem solving skills and yeah. the empathy that we have and all the great things that come with ha having um, this condition, dyslexia. And of, of course, when we were speaking earlier, um, I think you might have mentioned um, knowing about dyslexia is really liberating for you, and it yeah. is for me as well. Honestly, I could give me a mic in, in, in Wembley Stadium with millions of people, and I'd be shouting on top of my voice, listen, I've got dyslexia, and I'm proud, and I wear this label with pride. Um, but there's been a few people that I've met in the past who would actually say knowing has kind of held them back, the wish they didn't know. I mean, what's your take on that? Mm. I think, um, again, it kind of, it's that self-sabotaging thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because then you could almost think like, um, going all of these years, for example, I can say like, I went how many years through primary school, secondary school, then got mm -hmm. to college. And I did pretty well in primary school and secondary school. And I could have been like, okay, I've been di um, diagnosed with um, dys dyslexia. I give up and that could have just been it. And I could have just allowed that to kind of like um, sabotage my, my my progress at university. Um, and so I think it's also a mental thing as well, a mental perspective. Um, I think it's definitely a mental perspective that, that can be the challenge and that kind of barrier. And I think that's what would probably need to be tackled. Um, it's that kind of like perspective of everything and um, understanding exactly what dyslexia is and not allowing it to then sabotage the rest of like your your working journey or your studying journey because if you was depending on how you was beforehand um if you was able to kind of like cope then how much more so with things put in place for you moving forward absolutely absolutely that's really beautiful the way you put it is just so amazing and um you know if anybody's joined us now we're speaking today to um carla mark thompson I hope I've got the name right. I have got it right, yes. Um, and we're speaking about the positivity of having dyslexia. And, um, you know, Carla's, she's done amazing things over the years, uh, being diagnosed with dyslexia at a young age at college. And she's now an advocate for young people. Um, she's a youth worker and she does great work within the community. And if you've just joined us now, please feel free to drop your comments or your questions and do share this live show. Uh, somebody somewhere may really want to hear this. Um, of course, with this new variant that's come out and everybody's worried, you know, what's going to happen, children in schools, education, people in university, college, you know, we're all but sort of worried of, of what the future might hold. And, um, you know, it's great to be able to come here today and, and, and speak about positivity of dyslexia and to end our show with such a great topic, uh, which I'm really excited about. So if you have joined us um, just now, that's our topic for today. And, um, you know, Carla will be giving us some of the tips that she uses to, to um, survive every day within the workplace and also her daily life. Now, Carla, I'm just going to move on very quickly to the, to the next question. Um, give, give me a couple of examples of what you call advantage, dyslexia advantage. What, what would that be for you? Um, I suppose it's, organizational skills so i know that um i can get overwhelmed with large amounts of information or like yeah large amounts of information and not knowing exactly what's going on so i like to for me 
to kind of keep me calm, planning things in advance or structuring things to do um, really does help me moving forward. So I think um, the advantage is that my organisational skills, like I know that some people with dyslexia can be, they can their organisation can be really, really scattered. And I, I've been like that. But um, the beauty of it is, is that you find ways of coping. So for me, now I have good organisational skills because I know that I can get quite, quite, um, what's the word, overwhelmed if things are like scattered or I don't really know what's going on and get confused. So trying to like and plan out things um, way in advance helps me and that helps me progress within my working environment as well as my everyday life. So, and that's a yeah. great skill to have. It's a real great skill to have because in any job, you know, it's quite good to be concise and thorough and methodic in what you do. And, you know, what you're explaining right now is it's a great skill to have. And this is something that one can put on their CV to say, look, this is what I do best. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, though, Carla. I'm the opposite to you. I'm like, where is my paper? And it's right underneath somewhere. You know, I'm very chaotic. You know, I'm all over the place. But I call it organised mess. You know, um, and eventually everything gets, you know, gets done in the right place. But for me, I think what I, I think is really positive for me is more, I've got an amazing long term memory. I can remember some great things, you know, happened many years ago. The only issue is I don't have very good memory for short term memory. But the long term is just so unbelievable. And I think for me, that's a real skill to have mm-hmm. or something to celebrate. Yeah. Because, um, you know, not everybody might be able to kind of um, have that. And also creativity in terms of uh, problem solving and empathetic, really. And this is why I do the job I do. Because, you know, I really have a good listening ear and I'll be there and I'll listen to what the issue is. And I would find a solution. It may not come yeah. quickly, but I'll go to every length to find a solution to, 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 to that. And I think every organisation needs somebody, you know, with these skills to be able to work um, um, for them. So what would you actually say to your younger self? You know, what would you say to your younger self about dyslexia and positivity? Um, before you got the diagnosis. Before. Um, yeah. Or um, say after. Whichever way you want to take it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. definitely say um, to my younger self, I think if I'm going to talk to the Carla that was being told that she had dyslexia and didn't want to hear about it. Um, I would say to her that dyslexia doesn't diminish your self-value and your self-worth. Um, it may be an aspect of you, um, but that's not gonna take away who you are or the value that you can bring. Um, and there's always a positive in everything. So um, if you, at that point, if you are diagnosed with it, officially see it as something that you can stand in and and you can embrace and see it as something that you're going to be able to work through and know that you're going to be okay life is not gonna life is not gonna be um terrible for you there's Mm -hmm. the 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 possibilities are still going to be endless yeah, yeah yeah so right now if you've got a young young black boy watching this program or young black girl watching this program, looking at, yeah, hearing what you're saying and looking at these images that they're seeing right now, it's it's a very positive thing because, like I said, there isn't many of us in this kind of setting um, doing this kind of work we're doing. And we want to change the the, the, the shame, the stigma, the um, other things that come with why people won't speak about dyslexia. Um, yeah. You know, and I think it's just so great that we can both be here. Someone once said to me, it's all right, Liz, because you've actually come this far, you, you've, you're confident enough to speak about this. But when when you're battling every day with um, all the other things that come with dyslexia, it's not that easy to openly speak about this condition. Yeah. I mean, do you feel the same way? Do you think that maybe because we've done the academic route and we survived that and maybe we have the voice to now, you know, um, advocate for other people? I think, yeah, definitely. I think um, when you've been able to achieve certain things, despite having um, that kind of barrier, um, it kind of does make you think, actually, no, it is possible. Um, And um, it doesn't have to be 
a, a hindrance. And though it might be a bit harder for me then, the next person that doesn't have dyslexia, knowing that I've still been able to achieve um, the same grade as somebody that doesn't have dyslexia shows me that it's it's possible. And that if I can do it, so can another person that has been diagnosed with um, dyslexia as well. So um, most definitely. Yeah, it, it almost feels like every organisation needs an advocate to go around and say, look, dyslexia can be positive. It shouldn't be yeah. looked at as a negative yeah. thing at all because, um, you know, and I think for me, the more I learn and the more I achieve, the more I want more, you know? It's like someone says, well, you're going to be doing your PhD then? And I'm like, oh, I panicked for a minute, you know? <laughs> because, but then again, it's something I'd love to, you know, aspire to be because then I've got a better voice to be able yeah. to... Um, you know, reach out to, to, to the younger generation, or in fact, adults who may have just found out about specific learning dyslexia and dyspraxia, and sometimes the overlapping of ADHD, dyslexia, maybe autism, and all these other conditions that, that people have. So I think in a way, like you, when we said earlier, when we were speaking, and you said it was a calling um, to be able to share your experience, and um, you know, how God has chosen you to do this work, then exactly the same honestly to the extent that when people come to us and i'm not able to help them yeah. for whatever reason I, it really affects me the whole day you know i said i'd take it home with me but we're working from home aren't we so i'll take <laughs> it from the front room to the, to the kitchen with me and sometimes i'm lying in bed really worried thinking i really hope i can help this person fulfill their their um, potential so yeah i'd like to welcome build mummy house yola okay um <laughs> hi Carla, what are your goals for 2022 yeah well, ah, so my goals for 2022, I am aiming to actually have my book published. So I've actually written a book. Oh, um, so yeah. that's still um, under, well, it's being going to be published next next year. So that's definitely one goal that I'm going to have. Um, also rebranding my whole um, website and everything like that. My, my whole wellness brand, I'm planning to rebrand it, which has mm -hmm. been, I've been working on throughout the whole of this year. So planning to launch that um, come next January. Um, and also just being able to empower so many more young people um, mm -hmm. and just impact the lives of many more young people, whether that is through fitness, whether that is through um, my general work, um, I really want to be able to still be a role model and so so many seeds into many different young people's lives so that they yeah. can go on and be great as well. Oh, this is so amazing. And of course, you speak about body body self-image and body yeah. positivity as well. Yeah. What made, I mean, what, when you were diagnosed with dyslexia or before you were diagnosed with dyslexia, were there things like self-confidence issues or self-esteem issues? And is that why you kind of, wanted to work along that way to to make a change in, in that area, so to speak. Um, and are you able to share some of that with us? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I had body dysmorphic disorder. Um, how I saw myself, um, I saw myself in a very negative way. It really like affected my everyday life. And I suppose even like if I'm linking it with um, dyslexia, um, I didn't get, I got diagnosed with body dysmorphia, um, I think, maybe a couple of years after, but I, ha I've, I had it throughout my whole childhood. Um, and I think the whole perspective of myself and then being told, oh, you know, you've got dyslexia on top of mm -hmm. how I was functioning, not knowing that I had body dysmorphia, I would be very critical of myself as well, highly critical. Um, and so I think that's also why I received, you know, yeah. the thoughts of, oh, you know, you may have dyslexia so negatively because I already used to kind of like see myself in such a, a, a negative state. Um, and yeah, I think I already felt so bad about myself and now you're telling me something else. Like it was quite a challenge at first, but I think it's definitely um, all of my childhood experiences, everything that I've gone through um, has again, made me who I am today. And mm. I don't believe that God allows you to go through certain things or have a certain path of life for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think once you've been healed and you've been able to overcome and kind of like broken through from all of that, you are then meant to go back yes. and bring everybody yeah. else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whoever you're yeah. called to, you're meant to come and um, help them to be set free from from certain things that they've gone through. So I definitely think that's that's why I get my, my drive in. 
Wow, that's so powerful. You know, as you said that, I just have good scribbles all over me because I remember when I um, actually wanted to come out and talk about dyslexia um, and have a, this condition, my back was, I mean, I talk about this a lot on our live show, but my back was against the wall where I was literally, the, I couldn't, you know, you know when you just, I don't know if anybody or yourself have ever been in that situation where you can't get any lower than that. Any lower than that, it's just that there's nothing else that can get as low as that. And I remember sitting in my front room um, at my dining table thinking, I just can't see the way out of the, the, the situation I was in at that moment. And suddenly a penny dropped and I thought, well, I know what's stopping me. Because one of the things that I was looking at is if you want a job tomorrow, yeah, and you went to a, um, a recruitment agency, you're possibly likely to get an admin job. They're one of those jobs that, you know, it's quite, you can get one. Within, give yourself a month and probably get an admin post. And I was like, I really want, I wanted a job, but I just, the dyslexia kept saying to me, well, you want a job, but you're not really going to get that job, are you? Because you struggle to read, write, spell. You're, you can't remember a lot of things. You're getting people's names mixed up. All that negativity that kept coming to me. And um, I remember sitting at my dining table and thinking, I need to break away from, I need these shackles off my feet, if I can use that word. Mm -hmm. And I need to be free from um, this overwhelming condition that I've been hiding for so long. It was actually doing a lot of damage to me. You know, it was like really knocking my confidence, my self-esteem, my, I kept sort of having arguments in my head about or battling with, with, with this condition. And finally, I remember posting something on Facebook saying, I've got dyslexia. And I think people must have thought, and so what? You know, I'm pretty sure because it was like, so what's the big deal is? What I did get was, oh, really? I didn't know you had dyslexia. You know, really? And then a lot of people started coming out talking about their their, their, dyslexia, their condition as well. And I've never looked back ever since. You know, I, I sit here and I eat dyslexia, wear it with pride. I talk about it. I wear the T-shirt everywhere I go. I, I talk about this condition. And for me i even i also talk about it from a very positive way of saying look i was diagnosed with this condition with dyslexia and dyspraxia initially and then i was thrown in with something called visual stress which is the blue glasses and all the words running across the page and then i was diagnosed with dyscalculia like almost two and a half years ago and all these things have like i had a um i would say it wasn't easy at the time mm -hmm. but then it was a huge relief to know that ah Okay, it explains why that I'm always last at doing things. I'm always forgetful, getting lost everywhere, not finding my keys and rummaging through my bag. And oh, there it is. That's my dyspraxia <laughs> side of things, you know, right in front of me. And it can be a very chaotic world, but sometimes as well, you know, me and my children will laugh about certain things um, or the way I kind of come across with, with my condition. And um, like I said, I sing praises. And I think it's, it's one of those conditions that. You can, I'm not saying that it will, you can, you'll be cured of dyslexia. I'm not saying that because we, it doesn't go away. You know, mm -hmm. it's a condition that stays with us for life. But when you look at the positive side of all the things of having dyslexia and how great it can be with all the creativity and all the other things that we're good at, then it's, it's just great to, to, to celebrate that and, and exactly. show it to the younger community. Yeah. And you have platforms like this. <laughs> amazing really really great so i mean i just want to really say to anybody who's joined us now today we're speaking to carla mark thompson about dyslexia and having dyslexia with positivity outcomes so to speak um there are a lot of people that say well i struggle and there are a lot of negative things but today carla and i are speaking about the great things of having dyslexia in a, in a positive way and how we talk about it confidently i want to help so many people to overcome the shame and stigma and not look at a dyslexia as a positive a positive thing um, sometimes. Great. So if you really want to, you know, Carla's on social media, all type of different social media. She's on LinkedIn, which is where I think we found her, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was her stuff that we found her. She's got an amazing YouTube channel and she talks about, um, I think her YouTube channel is called Carla Lotus and then Dash YouTube. Of course, we'll share all this on our uh, when we share the live show on all our different um, social media platforms. She's also on Instagram, and she's doing amazing work with um, young people, uh, with, with um, working within the community. 
and she's such an amazing person and we feel really honoured to have you today on A2I The Steps and Live Show. And it happens to be one of our live, last live shows um, until 2022, which I can't believe is just right corner. <laughs> now, just before we go, Carla, what message do you have for our young black community, the young people um, within our community, um, black and ethnic minority? What advice do you have for them? I would definitely say um, to not feel shame, to not feel um, like you're the only person that has dyslexia, because as you can see, we're two yeah. black women, you yeah. know, stating that we we have this um, mm -hmm. dyslexia and that there is hope because um, at first I didn't see myself, I didn't see dyslexia as a positive thing and I was able to change my perspective and still do well and still go on to achieve great things and, and in the future I, I still believe that I can still achieve more. And so I would say please don't hold yourself back or allow um, it to kind of like be a stumbling block for you. Actually it can be something that um, you can work through and you can get the support to continue to thrive. Um, so I definitely would say, you know, it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's something that you can embrace and you are not the only person that is going through it or that, you know, has been diagnosed with it. There's many more people. Um, there's many more people and there is support out there. Wonderful. Thank you. And of course, it is our last live show. Got to get that twisted up, tongue twisted. And I want to say a very big thank you to any, um, all the people that watch our live show our podcast channel, which is um, on Acast, and everyone that listens to it, our funders, our producer, Yola, um, Leah, who's the researcher, admin team, who does the flyers, the social media team, everybody. We'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year 2022. And we want to say thank you very much for all your support. Without our viewers, there's no show. There's no point in us being here and there's no one, you know, watching or commenting on the great work that we're doing within our community. And uh, Carl, I'm going to um, obviously hand it over to you to wish people Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all the things that comes with it, you know, um, because it's going to be a great year. You know, we have to stay positive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. I just want to thank you, Elizabeth, um, for having me on the show and for everybody that's tuned in today. Um, I do wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I pray that you will have a great year and it will be just amazing. Better than this year and greater things will come to you. Wonderful, thank you very much. Okay, that brings us to the end of our live show, All Things Dyslexia. I want to say, have a very Merry Christmas. Do be safe, do wear your mask wherever you go and do wash your hands and all the things that come with um, this terrible, terrible pandemic that we're going through at the moment. Take care everybody, see you next year. Didn't think I'll ever say that. It's come very quick, hasn't it? <laughs> See you next year, 2022. Same time, same place with different topics. Take care for now. Bye-bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye.